Good morning. Welcome to worship here at First Presbyterian Church, where our mission is loving God, loving neighbors, and living with purpose. Is my microphone on today? No. How are we doing? Oh, there, there we, go. we go. Good morning again. So there was a little <laughs> snafu on WIBW this morning where they listed First Presbyterian Church as being closed. Well, we are not closed, and we're so glad you're here. We're so happy you're here. We're going to send you home with soup today, made by our fellowship team that just decided randomly to spoil us all today. We're so thankful. And just so you know, we will always make sure we are listed as First Presbyterian Church of Topeka. So only when you see that whole business are we really closed. Just to clarify, help us spread the word. It is that time of year for a couple of really important things. Number one, we are getting ready to nominate new officers to serve in the coming year, new elders and new deacons. If you've always wanted to be an elder or deacon, or if you know someone that you think has the gifts to be an outstanding elder or deacon, please let us know. We are working hard on that right now. And it's also time to sign up for Dinners for Eight. If you'd like to get to know more people at our church in an informal, friendly setting, this is a great thing to do. You can read more about that in your bulletin today. Friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let, Let us, us rejoice, rejoice and, and be glad, glad in it. it. Please rise in body or spirit to the call of worship. God's love is higher than the sky. God's righteousness is stronger than the mountains. In God's love, we are safe. Let us pray. Loving God, in your light we see light. Waters of pure joy wash over us. We are amazed by the abundance of your gifts. Your love transforms our despair into delight. Your spirit has blessed this community with an abundance of gifts, gifts of wisdom, 
knowledge, faith, healing, and love. You are ever faithful, ever just, and ever righteous. May we delight in you always. And we all say, Amen. Please be seated. Knowing we are eternally forgiven and infinitely loved, let us boldly confess our sins before God. Loving God, it is easy to feel superior to others when we think our gifts are better than theirs. It is always easier to be jealous of the gifts of others that we wish we had others. Forgive us when we act as though we have earned that. Just give us, send us your love that we may rejoice in our gifts and the gifts of others. Crown us in peace that we may use your precious gifts to build a community of healing and hope and walk in your ways. We continue now in silent prayer. Amen.
God's steadfast love fills the cosmos. It beckons us to take re refuge and comforts us in tough times. So draw near. You are in the right place. This is the house of love. You are accepted no matter what. Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday to all of you young people, young at heart, young in age, whatever, right? So raise your hand if you like getting bossed around. Got one back here. I'll bet his boss said, you better put that hand up. Yeah, I mean, raise your hand if you've liked somebody telling you what to do. The reality is, we don't like being told what to do. You know, like when you want to go outside and do something, and your mother says you've got to clean your room, or maybe your spouse says, no, you've got to do the dishes, whatever that case may be. We like having our own way. And we don't like being told what to do. And the same holds true for God, right? I mean, we sometimes hear God calling us and telling us what we should do, but we want to do our own thing. And we may think, I can't do that, or that's going to be awfully uncomfortable. There are a lot of reasons why we can choose to ignore God, right? Well, here in a little bit, we're going to hear a story from the Gospel of John, where Jesus and his mother Mary are at a wedding. And everything's going great until they run out of wine. And then uh, Mary runs over to Jesus and she kind of bosses him around. She says, they're out of wine. And guess what? Jesus doesn't like being bossed around either. He says, what is that to me? Why are you bothering me? I have things that I need to do. But Mary knows Jesus is going to do what his mother tells him to do. So she goes to the servants and she says, do what he says. So she's really getting kind of bossy in this story, don't you think? But here's the thing. Mary knows Jesus can do this. And she knows a way to fix this problem. And so Jesus listens to Mary and the servants listen to Mary. And, and lo and behold, the problem gets fixed. Jesus turns water into wine. It's, it's a miracle. It's amazing. Sometimes it's like that with God. God is telling us to do something even though we may not feel like doing it. Tomorrow we celebrate Martin Luther King's birthday. Martin Luther King was a, a Baptist pastor. And I imagine there were times he didn't want to do what God called him to do. Because God called him for a very special purpose to stand up, to rise up, and take a stand against hatred and racism. And because he listened to God and did what God told him to do, he was, he was put in prison, he was beaten, he was stabbed, he eventually even died because of what he did. But you know what? Because of his life, our country is a better country today. And that's why we honor him with this other with this holiday we we honor him and we honor others like him who listened to god and stood up and took a stand against hatred and racism so when god tells us to do something even though we may not feel like doing it we need to remember that 
God's not going to ask us to do anything that God knows we, can, we can't do. God knows we can. And God has a way to fix problems in this world. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for people who are willing to hear your call, to listen to what you tell them, and to act. People like Martin Luther King. Be with us and help us to always listen for your voice and be willing to do what you call us to do. Amen. See you all next Sunday. Let us pray. Holy God, open our minds, our hearts, our bodies, and our spirits to receive the message you want us to hear in your word today. Amen. Our first scripture reading today is 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 11. I'm reading from a newer translation called the Common English Bible, provided by Sandra. If you'd like to follow along in your Bible, which is the new Revised Standard Version, you can find it on page 174 in the New Testament section. Listen for the Word of God. There are different spirits, spiritual gifts, but the same spirit. There are different ministries and the same Lord. And there are di different activities, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. A demonstration of the spirit is given to each person for the common good. A word of wisdom is given by the spirit to one person a word of knowledge to another according to the same spirit, faith to still another by the same spirit, gifts of healing to another 
into one spirit. Performance of miracles to another, prophecy to another, the ability to tell spirits apart to another, different kinds of tongues to another, and the interpretation of the tongues to another. All these things are produced by the one and same spirit who gives what he wants to each person. Second scripture is John chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. You can find this in page 93 in the New Testament section of your pew Bibles. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the celebration. When the wine ran out, Jesus' mother said to him, they don't have any wine. Jesus replied, woman, what does that have to do with me? My time hasn't come yet. His mother told the servants, do whatever he tells you. Nearby were six stone water jars used for the Jewish cleansing ritual, each able to hold about 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water, and they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some from them and take it to the head waiter, and they did. The head waiter tasted the water that had become wine. He didn't know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. The head waiter called the groom and said, everyone serves the good wine first. They bring out the second-rate wine only when the guests are drinking freely. You kept the good wine until now. This was the first miraculous sign that Jesus did in Cana of Galilee. He revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, yesterday, our session had a planning retreat here at the church downstairs in Willer Hall. Your elders invested a sizable portion of their Saturday to come and reflect on what our church accomplished last year and to begin discerning what the Holy Spirit is leading us to try in 2022. We prayed, we sang, we read scripture, we ate huge donuts, and we discussed many things. At the end of the retreat, we held our monthly meeting since the church is closed tomorrow in observance of the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. And we were just, we were rocking and rolling through our agenda, voting on things left and right, and, and everything was unanimous until we came to an action item from our hardworking fellowship team, that same group that is sending us home with soup today. This is the team that delivers Silver Wings meals to our older adult members. They plan gatherings and picnics and all kinds of fun things for us to do as a church. And sometimes they like to live on the edge just a little bit. So they were seeking approval to serve mimosas at the breakfast that we hope to have as part of our annual meeting of the congregation at the end of next month. Um, and our church's policy is no alcohol on our premises, so approval is needed for any exceptions. And after a bit of discussion, the elders voted, and the motion passed, though it was not unanimous. That's okay, because this is a group of elders that knows how to disagree with each other respectfully and move on. Anyway, after the vote, one of the elders said, even though I voted no, can I still have a mimosa at the breakfast? <laughs> and after the laughter died down, we assured this elder, yes, that's just fine. Alcohol is not everyone's friend. And a number of us have struggled with drinking too much or we have lived with someone or loved someone who struggles with that. But 
it also raises the festivity level of a celebration like nothing else, especially weddings. In the time of Jesus, a wedding was not so much all about the bride and her dress and the romantic love between two people like it is today. This was a real joining together of two families. This was an event for the whole town, often lasting for days. And in Jesus' day, you really could not have a wedding without wine. Running out of wine would have been the ultimate humiliation for the bridegroom and his family because they would have been seen to have failed to meet a basic expectation of hospitality. It would absolutely have cut the party short. And so when the mother of Jesus says to him, they have no wine, it is a true disaster. No wine. They have no wine. And can't we all relate to that feeling of running short? We all come up short on something at some point. Time, money, patience, prognosis, energy, opportunity, second chances. Jesus' mother says to the servants, do whatever he tells you. And don't you just wonder what it was like to be one of those servants? To be on the job at a wedding that is on the brink of collapse, and then to be told by a guest to do whatever that guest's son tells you to do? How would that go over at a modern wedding reception today? But the servants comply, and they do exactly what Jesus tells them to do, they fill the jars with water, not part of the way or most of the way, but all the way up to the brim. And don't you think they must have wondered what was going on? Were they rolling their eyes behind Jesus' back? Perhaps they thought they were humoring a difficult guest, much like a flight attendant fulfills an over-the-top request from a demanding passenger just to keep the peace. Certainly, sir, we're happy to fill these enormous stone jars with water in the middle of a wedding. And I can visualize the servants going along with things up to this point, though that's a lot of work to haul 120 to 180 gallons of water. It takes a whole team of us just to deal with 50 gallons of milk at our Wednesday food share ministry. And what's harder to picture is the look on the servants' faces when Jesus says, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. Seriously? You want us to do what? What kind of crazy is this at a wedding when they're out of wine? But they do it. And who knows when the water became that good wine? When it first hit the jars? When the servants first drew some out, or maybe as they carried it to the steward, did the servants sneak a little taste on the way? Because I would have. Or maybe it didn't turn into wine till it hit the head waiter's lips. We don't know. What we do know is that the servants did what Jesus told them to do. It didn't make sense at the time, but they did it. Now, perhaps they saw something in Jesus' eyes that helped them sense that he knew what he was doing. Or perhaps they just didn't have anything to lose by doing it. Whatever it was, they did it, and the result was a miracle beyond what anybody saw coming, except maybe Jesus' mother. How did she know? that the servants had such an important role to play in all this. I keep coming back to her words, do whatever he tells you. We Americans, as Pat pointed out, are people who do not like 
to be told what to do. There weren't very many of you who raised your hands when Pat asked who likes being bossed around. Obedience is not a very glamorous word. We usually associate it with dogs and maybe small children. My daughter Rachel has been attending William Jewell College, which markets itself as the critical thinking school, specializing in teaching students how to think critically for themselves and question everything, which is great. We need a lot more of that in the world. But there's something about simply hearing what Jesus tells us to do and then going and doing it even when nobody else is doing it. The normal way to get more wine is by going and buying it or borrowing it, not by filling some big old jars with water, but do whatever he tells you. What does Jesus tell us to do? Later on, in his ministry, Jesus would tell people, if somebody strikes you, don't strike back. Forgive. Forgive some more. Forgive some more after that, and when you are really sick and tired of forgiving them, do it again. Love your enemies and pray for the people who are out to get you. Do not worry about your life what you will eat or what you will drink or what you will wear, but seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you as well. These things still don't come easy. Do whatever he tells you to do. Well, in the fall of 2020, Our church said yes to the invitation of the Presbyterian Mission Agency to become a Matthew 25 congregation. Now, hopefully, you have heard Pat and me talk about this so much that you are at this moment rolling your eyeballs and saying to yourself, we know, we know, (laughs) you know we are committed to feeding the hungry giving a drink to those who are thirsty, welcoming the stranger, clothing those who need clothing, caring for the sick, and visiting those in prison. For when we do, it is the same thing as doing it for Christ himself. That is what Jesus teaches his disciples when he tells that famous story of the judgment of the nations in the Gospel of Matthew. And at our session retreat yesterday, I reminded our elders... Well, we're now in our second year of this. The newness has worn off. That initial burst of enthusiasm has calmed down. Often it's the second year that's more challenging than the first. We're now entering the stage where we're going to need courage, creativity, and raw stamina to keep moving forward and growing and expanding what we do. It will cost time, energy, and money. It will require that every single one of us use the spiritual and material gifts God has given us without knowing the outcome of any of it. But we do have the assurance that we will be doing exactly what it is that Jesus tells us to do. Jesus told some servants at a wedding to fill six stone jars with some water and told them to draw it out and take it to the man in charge of the wine at a wedding. Without having any idea what was to come, the servants' obedience resulted in more wine than any wedding in that town had ever seen. Depending on the size of those jars, we are talking 600 to 900 bottles of really, really, really good stuff. Enough for every guest to drink a bottle and take a bottle home. Enough for the servants 
to drink their fill, and hopefully they did. Enough that Jesus' disciples saw it and believed in him. Enough that we are still telling this story today and relishing those images of extravagant abundance. What extravagant, abundant things might God do through us in 2022 if we do whatever Jesus tells us to do? Whatever it is, it will be better than anything any of us are picturing right now. With God, it always is. Whatever it is, it will bless the whole community, like wine at a wedding. Whatever it is, let's find out together. Thanks be to God. God's gifts to us are extravagant, beyond our imagination. In response, we now offer ourselves, our time, our talent, and our treasure. If you need some ideas on how to share your time, talent, and treasure, come talk with me or Pat, and we will be happy to brainstorm some ideas with you. If you're ready to invest financially in loving God, loving neighbors, and living with purpose, you can do that by placing your check or money in one of the offering boxes by the doors. You can mail a check to the church. You can give securely online at donate.fpctopeka.org. 
Let us give to God and our neighbor with joyful hearts, delighting in the abundance of God's love. God of abundance, you have poured out your gifts upon this community, giving us what we need to work for your justice and peace. In gratitude and joy for these gifts, we offer you the gifts of our living. We offer the gift of money for your transforming work in the world. We offer the gift of our lives for the healing of all people. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We pray. God, from whom the whole universe came into being, before whom generations rise and fall, 
you in whom we live, move, and have our being. We thank you for all your good and gracious gifts, for life and health, for food and clothing, for the beauties of nature and the wonder of human nature. We humble ourselves long enough to confess that we have not loved you with our hearts, souls, and minds, and we have not loved our neighbors as Christ loved us. All too often we live by our own selfish impulses rather than by the life of sacrificial love as revealed by Jesus. As we look within ourselves, The history of our lives is a history of walking away from you, yet continuously you offer us your mercy. Lord, help us. Give us the intelligence to know your will, the courage to do your will, and the devotion to love your will. Lord, we would bow as empty vessels waiting to be filled that our minds and souls are busy with many things which impede our being filled by you. We worry about our children, our personal finances, our health, our country. We worry about our friends and families on our prayer list. Help us to let go of the cares and troubles around us and simply trust you. Empty us of these distractions that we may be filled with the love, hope, peace, and joy that only you can provide. We pray these things in the spirit of Jesus, the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
I think that's soup waiting for us in Disciples Hall. Mm-mm. Please come and get some and say hi to a few friends. And as we go out into the world, let us remember there is power in doing whatever he tells us to do. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Alleluia. Amen. Thank you.